Hey, I'm Andy Chanley from 88.5 FM, and this is a Live at Home with Joshua Henry, who joins us here. Uh, Live at Home, by the way, is a production of Cal State Northridge and Saddleback College. Joshua, good to talk to you. Thanks for having me, Andy. Great to be here with you. I'm excited to to hear you perform. Uh, At the end, after we're done chatting, Joshua's going to do a couple of songs for us, and and I can't wait to hear it. But you've probably already heard one of his songs. I'm talking about Guarantee that we've been playing for the past uh, half a year uh, on yeah. uh, 88.5 FM. It's been a long time. Um, but uh, people, I, I want to say a couple of things about you for people that that don't know about all the things you do. Uh, he's a, a three-time Tony Award nominee, uh, already starred in Broadway shows like The Revival of Carousel. Uh, he stars in Lin-Manuel Miranda's film adaptation of Jonathan Larson's Tick, Tick, Boom that comes out this fall. Uh, and so uh, that, that's probably a good place to start. I'll ask this question. Joshua, they say that all actors want to be rock stars and all rock stars want to be actors. Uh, pick a lane, pal. Wh- which is it? Are you a rocker that wants to act or an actor that wants to rock? Uh, I played the fifth. Um, <laughs> that's really fun. A really funny saying. You know, I music has always been my first love. And um, Broadway and acting sort of came a little bit later on. Um, and once I got into that lane, um, it's a beautiful one, and I and I I love it so much. I've done about nine Broadway shows now, and some film and TV. But you know, when you're doing that, it's hard to to spend a a good amount of time exploring and creating in music, and spending a lot of time in the studio because you have to sing a show like Hamilton eight times a week. So, you know, last year was the perfect opportunity for me to really slow down and get back to what my first love was. Um, and that's music. And now I get to share that, you know, and I'm so glad that I, you know, I'm really grateful even throwing that guarantee up there because, yeah, that, that, that's that been um, that's been heating up a lot around around the country. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, song and, and your music here in just a couple of minutes because it is a, a really good tune. Um, but this project, uh, before we move off of this, this Tick, Tick, Boom, this looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, Bradley Whitford's in there, Judith Light, mm-hmm. uh, Vanessa Hudgens, uh, another person who can't decide whether they're an actor or a rocker. <laughs> Some uh, people just, they want to do, they, they, don't, they don't pick a lane. They just want to pick the whole highway. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, you were also in the first national touring company for uh, Hamilton uh, as the damn fool who shot him. Uh, you're, you're Aaron Burr, and you spent some time out here in Southern California playing at the Pantages, didn't you? I did, and dude, playing Aaron Burr in Hamilton was wild. I mean, I still remember our first opening night at the Pantages. After that, dum da da dum 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 just coming out on stage, I, I couldn't hear anything. I mean, it was deafening. It's like one of those Michael Jackson or just rock star moments when the crowd just loses their mind. So doing that show, I mean, you know, and then you got to get back to like, you know, Josh, you're here to perform your technique, you're this character, focus and, and get it done. But doing that show like that eight times a week, um, it really prepared me uh, for, to hopefully go on tour, you know, and have that stamina um, that's needed to really deliver these songs the way that I want to um, and I also really got from doing that show and being close to Lynn manuel Miranda a great idea of, of what, of good writing. You know what I mean? Like he's one of the greatest writers around, you know, what, more than musical theater. I mean, hip hop, you know, he can write mm-hmm. any type of song. Um, and so I got to be around him when he was creating not just Hamilton, but In the Heights, which was his first musical. That was my first Broadway musical. So before yeah. he was, before the world knew him as this world-class writer, genius, which he is, I saw him, you know, just with a pencil behind his ear and going over these notes and he's trying to find the ending, the second half of Hamilton and In the Heights. So that was invaluable to be around him in those creative processes. Yeah, you know, a, a good guy to know uh, around Broadway, uh, Lin-Manuel <laughs> yeah. Miranda. Uh, yeah, you, you brought up In the Heights, um, and like you said, you were in the in that uh, his his first musical, and then now in the Heights is a movie that just came out what a couple months ago, and uh, you're you're you sing on the soundtrack. Your voice is on it, so when people see it, they're going to be hearing you. I do, yeah. I mean, I, I 
that was my first musical and I love that music so much. It reminds me of where I grew up in Miami, Florida, where hip hop and salsa, merengue and R&B was the name of the game. You know, you heard that, you know, on, in all the cars going by. Um, so being able to do a show like that and now having that show would mean so much to me being out there, I think it's HBO Max and on the big screen and to have a, a small part of, of my voice be a part of it kind of forever is, is super, super special. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, so you were born in Winnipeg. Is that right? When did you leave? Yes. That? I left when I, my parents moved us down to Florida when I was like three years old. So, okay, so I you probably don't remember that at all. No, I don't have, it, it goes in and out. Um, great memories of, of, of that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was born in Winnipeg. I've visited Canada back a few times in Montreal and Toronto and I've gone back up to film, but I'd love to go there and, and spend a significant amount of time there. Maybe do a little music festival there. Um, so hopefully one day soon. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, you just did some uh, traveling, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, last Was it last night that you play in the Hamptons? I did, yeah. Broadway out east to this incredible place called Calissa. And I did, uh, I brought this guy with me and did a lot of really cool tunes. I did this song called Checking In and Hold Me that are also going to be on my upcoming album, Grow. And yeah, I, I've, I've been hitting a lot recently. I played a week before then in Massachusetts at the Barrington Stage. Uh, right here in New York City at Little Island uh, a month before that, and right here in Central Park at a place called Tavern on the Green. So I've been, I've been hitting a, a, a gigging a bunch, yeah. spreading this music. It's been so really nice. When you did this thing last night, this uh, this Broadway out east, um, you played for people out there. You you did did you do both show tunes and some of your your solo stuff? Totally, totally. So and when how, I go out, how did the crowd? How did the crowd react to to all of those things? Were they just receptive to to whatever you're you're, you're going to play them? Or I got to tell you something. Like the, you know, the Broadway community really has my back, and they've supported me when I go and do TV and film. The music is no exception. Thankfully, it's thankfully it's really good music too. I mean, a song when I played a song like "Checking In," I had people. There was a twelve year old girl there. There was a 70 year old woman who came up to me afterwards and were like, that song checking in, that's going straight to the top. And I was like, what? Cause you know, sometimes when you come out with original music, you know, it's, and, and people know you for certain things, it's sometimes they just don't care or they're just not feeling it. They're like, no, 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 sing, sing, wait for it. Or uh, sing carousel or sing, you know but they really embraced it. And then I got to give them my funky soulful versions of songs like Memories from Cats, you know, um, which is, or On Broadway or different songs like If I Loved You from Carousel. But when I do it, I've always, you know, when I play this stuff outside of a show, I don't, I don't play it straight up. You know, uh, my sound is funky, soulful. So um, that's the version that I give them and they, they get the song and then they also hear my sound in my own music so it, it's pretty cool and, and great that the reception is has been wonderful on broadway is a, a great pull for you that's uh that's perfect that's, that's hey. in your wheelhouse going out and doing a, a <laughs> version of that I, I love it um so uh i asked this question to most artists that i, that I talk to because uh, i think it's a, a an interesting uh view into into your past tell me about your first guitar hmm. Man, I was about <clears throat> 11 years old, and I just remember um, finding it in my uh, my laundry room in Miami, Florida, and super dusty. And I didn't know that it was there. It was my dad's. I picked it out, nylon string, and I put it on my lap like this one here. I just kind of put it on my lap uh, like I was going to play slide guitar. I, I didn't know how to play. So I started just kind of, you know, and... And I started making chords like this, like, and I just didn't. Uh, Jordan, uh, what's his name? Um, the the guitarist who play, played it uh, like a lap steel. Um, yeah, uh, Steve Jordan was it? Yeah, I can't remember his name right now, but definitely right on my lap. And that's how I learned how to play guitar. Wow. And I would just listen to the radio, Andy, and on that nylon guitar, you know, form chords. And then I, I started going to, you know, I, I grew up in playing in church and. And eventually someone was like, you know, you got to put that thing right side up on your lap, son. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? So I had to relearn the whole thing. But 
I, you know, I, I just would watch other guitarists and I started to get the fingerings down, but I never remember that. I never forgot that guitar. I wish I still had it. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, that what, little what night long. No idea. I, you know, it's probably still in Miami somewhere. You know what? It's at my parents' house. I know where it is. It's at my parents' house. They're still in Florida. So yeah, you got to get um, that. That's going to be more and more important as time, time goes on. Mm, That's going to be a I got to get. Yeah, I got to get that soup back up. Oh, it was gorgeous. I just remember night and day. I, they, my parents would have to be like, Josh, it's time to go to bed. And I just didn't <laughs> want to put it down. It's, it's neat that you've, there's a, a family tie to that. And uh, did you, did you uh, have a relationship with, with your father? Did you know him as a musician? Yeah, you know, he wasn't <clears throat> actually, my father wasn't a musician. He just had it. He played it. He never, I never heard him play it before. That was the first time that I saw it when I was 11. Um, it was just in this case. Um, he's got a really great voice, my dad, um, as, as does my mom. And my family, like my brother plays bass. He's an incredible musician. Um, my sister grew up playing classical piano. We had grew up with a piano in the house and a bunch of records, an actual big re record player. So I grew up around music. And then again, in church, I was part of the praise, even praise man for just years. It was just a part of our lives, music. So um, that, that was... Uh, something that was I, I loved from a very early age I remember being five and like just harmonizing with melodies and being like why is this making me feel things um yeah my first you, love you uh you just kind of answered uh, my next question um in in the song guarantee there's there's uh there's electric blues there's uh, some hip-hop elements there's some funk to it uh and and i think you just answered the, that that question preemptively it, it was a great uh what did ray charles say uh there's only two kinds of music good music and bad music it sounds like you were listening to a lot of good music when you were growing up i was listening to a lot of great music man i mean from anything from take six to george benson to stevie wonder you know to then coming up in r&b like brian mcknight mary j blige and I mean, I can go on and on, but that's that's what I grew up on, um, aside from a like, gospel. So, um, and then when I started getting into like like hip hop, hip hop, Outkast was a big influence. So uh, you yeah. know, when you hear this little this little uh, rap break in Guarantee, like you be like, oh, okay, he he listened to, to Big Boy and yeah. <laughs> Andre three thousand um, right there, yeah, and Andre yeah. three thousand for sure. Yeah. Hey, are, are you surprised sometimes by how much the 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 worship music element influences the stuff that you do? That's a great question. You know, I was just talking to a friend about that. And when you grow up with a with with praise and worship music, um, and the passion that goes behind it. Uh, the spiritual aspect um, means so much. So when I play, you know, a three chord progression, you know, I, I that, that is a part of my upbringing. I'm playing it as though I'm playing it how I trained to play it with passion and for a greater purpose. So I find when I'm going into sessions or when I'm just jamming with folks and I'm singing a certain way, they're like, yo, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that's just what I do. For me, singing with purpose and passion, whether I'm singing, you know, a Kirk Franklin song or, you know, a Anderson Pack song, that influence comes through because that's that was my first memories in music, that praise and worship music. So it stays with you. What do you think you'd be doing? Uh, usually, uh, let me let me uh, set this up. I usually ask this question to people uh, as well. What do you think you'd be doing if music didn't exist? I know what you'd say. You'd be an actor. Uh, so, so let's say if performing arts didn't exist, oh. what what would Joshua Henry be doing right now? Man, if performing arts didn't exist, I can only give you the plan that I thought was going to materialize. I mean, my mom worked in an accounting firm for thirty years, um, and I was just going to see if I could do that. And I was not great at math, and I was <laughs> <laughs> numbers was not. You just, I, I mean. I didn't grow up, you know, I, I grew up believing that or hearing that I could do anything I wanted to, but I just didn't know that performing was an option to make a living. So, 
yeah, I, I, I guess I would have tried to work in an accounting firm like my mom. Well, thank goodness Joshua Henry did not become oh. an enrolled agent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, much, well, we're much happier that, that you you've chosen this. This is uh, it's it's for for all of our benefit. Um, hmm. You know, uh, for people like you uh, that, that don't work at a desk like an accountant, uh, you have to have you have to be your own um, agent in things. You you, okay. you have to be planning what's next all of the time. Um, I know that you've got uh, some things planned. Uh, but can you give us a, a little glimpse at, at some things we'll be uh, seeing you pop up in over the next year or so? Sure. Yeah. Um, Tick, Tick, Boom, as you mentioned, sure. is one of them. November 12th, that's that's happening. My album, Grow, is coming out September 10th. Um, actually, today is what, I don't know when this is going to come out, but uh, on August 29th, this coming Sunday, uh, I'm going to be performing with... Uh, Abigail Barlow and Emily Bear, who are the writers of Bridgerton, the musical. Wow. And, I'm, and uh, I'm doing that at the Elsie Fest, which is a big uh, music fest that happens in New York um, that Darren Chris puts on. on. Um, so that's happening. Um, you can also catch me uh, on September 10th in Bryant Park. I'm going to be performing with the Classic Theater of Harlem um singing doing some Langston Hughes pieces so that's that's going to be really exciting um and then uh later on uh in September September's actually a busy month I'm going to be uh in San Diego at the Old Globe Theater doing a set with some original music and my my full band um on uh September 25th Yo, so Blues, um beautiful it's a, a great oh, place it's a gorgeous gorgeous place um, and then also, uh, I'm doing some concerts with this amazing symphony called Music in September. Got like three dates there in the 20s. So yeah, a lot of a lot of music here in New York um, and in LA coming up this month. Nice. Well, it's one of these times when you're out here, you have to stop in and see us and and, and play for us in, in person. Um, oh, I love one that. other thing that happens next week: uh, Happy birthday ahead of time. Hey, thanks, Andy. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> talk about playing some music for us um thanks for for spending some time with us i i, I know that uh it, you're in new york and i know it's hot uh, and you you took a second out and and turned off the uh, the ac to chat with us i appreciate that um but up next here joshua is going to play uh, a couple of songs which which songs are you going to play for us so i'm going to give you two songs two original songs checking in um which is the new single yeah the, the new single and then i'm also going to give you a live acoustic guarantee nice so you know that that hopefully that pairs well with the with the uh the one from the actual album that you've been playing which i really appreciate yeah the studio version of it you've been hearing on 88.5 fm for the past six months uh and once again the album comes out it's called grow comes out next month go and buy that wherever you buy albums and support joshua henry and then look for him everywhere because he's uh he's the king of all media pretty soon he's capturing uh <laughs> He's capturing all of the, uh, he's, you're looking at, you're trying to get the EGOT, the, the Emmy, Emmy, Golden Globe, Oscar, and Tony. Uh, you're, 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 now you're working on the Grammy. So, uh, so best of luck with that. Uh, like I thanks said, for making time for us. It makes, uh, it makes us happy to have you with us. Thank you so much, Andy. Great to talk to you. Thanks for supporting the music. Really appreciate it. Live at Home, it's a production of Cal State Northridge and Saddleback College. I'm Andy Chanley from 88.5 FM. And here is Joshua Henry.
These days of our lives, throwbacks, flashback Fridays, you pray, Lord, let me get back. Let me get you caught up. Everything I bought up, woo, everything you can't afford. Double click this bliss, I know your wish list. Took the pick, fixed it to your every desire. Look at me, I you admire. Check the blue check, these take you higher, higher. No, no, baby, don't run, don't we have fun? Don't I show you what you've never done? I need your love, thy kingdom come, that will be done. You like this one? What's up, y'all? My name is Joshua Henry, and you just heard Guarantee from my debut album, Grow. This next one is also from that album, and it's called Checking In. KCSN and KCSN HD1 Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1 Mission Viejo. A service of California State University Northridge and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 885fm.org.